All right, very cool. Uh, so who amongst our, our guests is feeling uh, chatty? I'll start. Oh, oh, sorry, Annabelle, I meant, I'm so sorry. I meant uh, of, our, of our panelists tonight. Oh, okay. No worries. I can start. <laughs> Thanks, Ian. No problem. Hey, my name is Ian. I graduated from Eastern back in December of 2018 from a math program. And now I'm working in investments. I can go. Um, I'm Kyra Gonzalez. I graduated in 2018 from Eastern and I am a su supervisor for foster care adoption agency out in central PA. Uh, I'm Jacqueline. I graduated from the class of 2020 here at Eastern. Um, I double majored in youth ministry and missiology and anthropology, and I'm currently working at Eastern at one of our PhD programs. That's awesome. All right. Um, and uh, we will also be having Lindsay Laverty, who will be uh, joining us um, in just a few minutes as well. Um, so I guess um, I think a good thing um, for us to um, to kind of think through as we get started. Um, so obviously we wanted to talk to some recent grads because we knew that, um, that it, you know, you all would be dealing with some of the biggest ramifications of the pandemic because you've been um, searching within the past uh, year and, and all the challenges that that has brought about. Um, so with that in mind, I guess the first question that I would love to ask you um, is, what would you say is the biggest challenge uh, that you faced in your job search? I'd say definitely radio silence, just mm. sending out job after job after job application and hearing nothing. <laughs> I could say a similar one. So I actually, um... The job that I, I do work at now, I was hired at December of this past year, and then I went quickly into this remote world. Um, and so I've gotten to see a bit of that piece, which was, um, yeah, sending out lots of applications and not hearing back. And then now I'm on this other end where I'm um, an interviewer, and I am seeing all of these applications come in and watching um, and having conversations about how does this work in the virtual world, and people are um, that's that's one of the biggest questions I definitely get in interviews right now is how does it work for you guys? Um, so yeah, similarly, I would say radio science, I saw it and now it's hard to also have this adjustment piece of what does work look like on Zoom and Teams, so. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to echo that as well, the, the radio science. I, I probably applied to up to 50 jobs and, and maybe heard back from five um, and the ones that I did hear back from, um, a lot of them just weren't sure um, funding wise because of what COVID has done, if they were able to take me and when they were able to take me. So um, navigating, especially the funding part because of you know the economy and what's happening with COVID was difficult. So then in light of those challenges, where did you all find that you were able to find the best leads in your search? So I'd say personally for me, I needed to send out just a large volume of, of uh, job applications, which hunting out specific jobs on like LinkedIn and stuff is great, but I found my best leads on um, job boards like uh, Handshake. So for me, Handshake, I just found so many jobs that I could just click send my application, not even write a cover letter, which I mean, cover letters are great, but they're also exhausting. Um, just being able to click through, be like, yeah, I'm interested in that, send it. And that's how I found my job through Handshake. I was on um, LinkedIn a lot. And I also was able to, uh, my job that I found was on Indeed. Um, so Indeed.com, I was probably on there every day and looking at multiple things, seeing what I even qualified to be able to do. Um, and yeah, it came along on Indeed, so. Yeah, all of my jobs that I applied were on Indeed, just because of the ease of just sending your, uploading your resume and I just sent it for you. It was pretty easy. So 
So obviously all of you are working now. So congratulations for that. That is a beautiful thing uh, <laughs> in the year of our Lord 2020. Um, so given that, um, obviously work looks different today than it did um, a year ago. Um, and what would you say that the experience of onboarding um, at your current workplace, um, what's that been like? Um, you know, can you talk us through a little bit about the process? Uh, are you remote? Are you from home? Are you hybrid? Um, what, what's that all look like? I can, I can speak to it um, in maybe a twofold way. Um, so we are completely, completely virtual. Um, so I think I meant, failed to mention this. I was a social work undergrad and social work uh, for my master's. So I do work in foster care adoption now. Um, which uh, has been a wonderful and challenging experience, but we um, typically, we need to go in person to see children. Um, and so I watched this year us move completely to Microsoft Teams, which is basically also Zoom, but um, has a lot of other kind of planning abilities. And it's been, <laughs> it's been really hard. Um, the adjustment, we had to like completely brainstorm how to function in a virtual world without seeing children and being able to assess their safety um, in person. So that was that was an adjustment and we won't go back in person or back to more in person or working in the office until essentially a vaccine is found. Um, and that's per like mandates from the government and per policies from our regional office. So it's been hard and I would say it's been hard for just personally, like it's the motivation piece. Um, you know, working in my my room or in the dining room and keeping that keeping that going every day of how do I fulfill like a quota of time, but also make sure I'm taking care of like myself and my own sanity of yeah, staring at a screen for eight hours and talking to people over calls and and Zoom and Teams. So um, yeah, fully remote and uh, definitely challenging. Yeah, I can speak to two different ends of that whole um, process because I actually changed jobs during COVID. Um, so I was at one job, HSB, um, an insurance place, when in March we heard for two weeks go home and work from home. And then that two weeks turned into a lot longer. Um, and so that was completely uh, remote, which is just something that's different. I, I don't know that I would say it's like good, bad, whatever. I think that it's just a lot to grapple with and figure out, uh, especially as a young professional, just getting your footing in um, a workplace, having to change everything up, but also kind of put everyone on a <laughs> level playing field because everyone's adjusting. Um, so I was completely remote when I was at HSB. Then in July, I left HSB and started working at SEI Investments. And there I've been a hybrid of in the office and remote, um, which has been a weird process because I have not met the guy who interviewed me or hired me or is my supervisor. I haven't met him yet. <laughs> um, I had my uh, interview over the phone, not even a video interview. I didn't know what he looked like. Um, and I actually, they are interviewing so many people that I was interviewing for three separate positions at the same time on a group phone call. Um, and one of them hired me and I went into the office as a new hire. And they said, the only people allowed in the office are the people who need to be in the office for the job, new hires, and one person to train that new hire. So I have so far met one person from my team, but I've still been going in no, I've met two people now. I've met two people from my team. Um, don't even know what most of them look like still. And I've been working there for like five months, uh, four months. Um, so it's definitely been an interesting process still figuring that out. Yeah, I, I'm working uh, a hybrid. So uh, my supervisor has been pretty lenient um, and just allowing me to come in when I need to and, and when I want to. So having that flexibility has been um, really good. It, it was interesting when I started uh, because um, I'm working at Eastern, as I said, and so when I first started, there was nobody at Eastern yet because they, they had staff staying home and classes hadn't started yet. 
so it was it was interesting to to start and not have anybody there and then have students come in later um but one one piece of advice that i would say if you are working at home at all is to um, figure out how to set boundaries with those who you live with um, and also figure out what they need as well because um, i've had four other roommates throughout covid um, and most of us are working from home at least one day of the week um, so you know talk to them figure out where they want to work if you have a meeting you know figure out a place where you can sit and not be interrupted especially if it's something important so boundaries are key can i add something you can about working at home. I also would give advice to set a designated workspace because one thing that we lose when we're working remotely is boundaries between ourselves and our workplace. And it's so easy to just keep working and keep feeling like you're in that office space and drained. There is something so different about turning off your laptop and getting up and walking away from wherever you're working, whether that's your desk or dining room table, not your bed done to your bed. Awesome, thanks. Um, so as you are think, like you're in the midst of these various work situations currently, um, have you heard anything about plans that your um, employers are making for the future? If anything is gonna change as you're navigating COVID or what that's gonna look like for you? So um, we're in like, a lot of discussions as just things change and it feels I feel like I was always saying in meetings like oh week by week something's different um, and it kind of has proven to be true but I think a piece that we've talked about is yeah for us um, we won't have like everyone be able to work back in the space together until there is um, a vaccine or if there's that's, that's essentially one of the bigger pieces or if there's you know a lower amount of numbers and so as we do that, it's been, yeah, different to navigate. Um, can we go in sometimes to view files? Um, you have to ask permission if you go want to go in the office from your direct supervisor, just so we can have like a track of people that do go in. So we're hoping by 2021 to be able to be back in offices. And that's going to be a whole adjustment then back to, um, because for some people, they've actually never worked continuously in an office. Um, and they've just been working from home and then others will have that transition from being fully in the office then fully at home and now back in. So we're hoping to, yeah, be back in person fully next year. Yeah, I think that plans are just constantly changing um, from employers, from employees. And I know I've been getting regularly regular updates from the um, higher up people at my office who were originally saying like beginning of January we'll all be going back and then it was more like March some of us will be going back and it has now gotten to um, they expect it never to go back to exactly how it was. Um, we actually have an office where you can move your desk around. You can like unclip it from this area, wheel it over here and clip it in somewhere else. So everyone's working far apart. We have to swipe a badge to go into any room so they can track who's in what room at what time. Um, and yeah, they, they are actually seeing this as a positive in some regards because um, I know my company was talking about um, expanding into a different state and they were worried about buying an office. And now they're like, we don't need to. We can see that like our employees can work from home and work remotely. Um, so there's not really a point in having an office space for every single person. Um, but that being said, they are still trying to bring some people back. But my position hasn't changed much at all. Um, with our PhD program, our students are from all over the world. So our classes were um, already virtual. The only thing that's changed is we normally have an in-person residency, um, but that has been shifted to an online format for, for the coming future. But um, yeah, not much has changed on our end. So we have, uh, we have our, our, our last panelist, uh, Lindsay. Thank you so much for being able to join us. Um, so uh, I'm hoping that maybe you wouldn't mind um, giving a little information about you. Um, 
letting us know, um, you know, when you graduated, what you studied, um, a little bit about what you've been up to, um, and kind of if you could just sort of bring us up to speed with um, how uh, the pandemic has affected your job seeking, particularly as coming out of a master's program as you as you were. So um, yeah, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. I apologize for being late. For some reason, I got my dates mixed up. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> um, but thank you for having me. I was really honored when you guys asked me to come for this. So, so yes, um, I guess I should start with, I did, so I just finished my graduate program. I was at Duquesne University, thank you. I was at Duquesne University, which is in Pittsburgh. And I graduated with rhetoric and philosophy of communication, a master's degree. And I did my undergraduate at Eastern University and I got it a BA in communication studies with minors in Spanish and writing. And I knew I wanted to get a communications master's degree and uh, Duquesne was just an excellent fit, but it was definitely uh, pretty bumpy the end of my grad program because uh, that is around the time I graduated in May. So uh, everything happened in March and similar to kind of what we're experiencing with students now is that I, there's a quick turnaround, like, you know, one day we're learning that this is increasing, the virus is spreading. And then literally like two days later, we're hearing that we have to get off campus. And it was a little different for me because I was already living off campus in an apartment. So I wasn't necessarily living in a dorm, but it was pretty crazy because I had to like, I have these major final pa like papers for my grad school. And so I had to like rush to the library because I was panicking that I wouldn't be able to get the books that I needed in order to write these final papers in order for me to graduate. So um, that was just definitely very stressful. And I also worked as a research assistant for professors, which is how I kind of paid for grad school. And so, um, and so, that was also stressful because I didn't know how I was going to be able to assist professors while being, you know, not in the office with them. So it was quite a transition. And as people are saying, you know, we made it work and I was able to graduate and still, you know, write those final papers and assist those professors. Uh, that said, the coronavirus definitely had an impact on my kind of being introduced to the workforce. I had a possible job like possibility in Washington DC with a communications firm and had met with one of the women for a coffee just to kind of say hello. Um, and they were hoping to have me come in for an interview. Uh, and this was like March when I met for coffee. And basically after that, um, you know, they were a small communications firm. So they put a hiring freeze. So, um, and I wasn't necessarily at a job offer point, but I definitely was at an uh, interview point. So uh, it just kind of got cut off there. And that was disappointing for me because obviously um, that's kind of, I, it was a position I was looking forward to. I really enjoyed the woman I met with and, um, and I was looking to move to either DC or New York or Philly. So it hit one of, it hit, the check boxes for me. Um, but with, with that said, um, I spent the summertime, you know, uh, actually kind of trying to figure out my next moves. And I would say two mini lessons, and I'll wrap up here during that time was just that one, uh, who you know, is hugely helpful, like networking for me was actually what got me one into the kind of temporary position I am in now. And also I actually started doing freelance work. So I started writing, doing writing projects for companies I had either interned for or like had connections with. And so that carried me through some of the summertime. I was able to get some, you know, work for that time while I was job searching. And, um, and then I also ended up having something happen actually where uh, I had an Eastern University professor call me up in August and say, we had, you know, something fall through and we'd love for you to teach some online courses. And so I'm actually um, an adjunct instructor at Eastern University for this semester teaching communication classes. And that was definitely an answer to prayer because I, <laughs> I, um, I just needed something and for this temporary time 
and it was excellent. It was a perfect fit and I've really enjoyed it. So um, this has been a pleasant surprise. But once again, it was like who I knew, like someone thought of me. And it was also posting on LinkedIn because I posted about graduating and it brought someone to, it brought me to mind when they were thinking about who, like who would they want to call. So LinkedIn, networking, and then um, I would say, you know, even thinking about, is there something like a side hustle that I could do to bring in some money while I'm job searching um, would be kind of my three takeaways during that time. Thank you so much. Let's see. Kristen, is it me or is it you? <laughs> it's you. <laughs> it's me. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, do, do, do. Okay. So this is where I think I think a lot of us kind of are right now. It's like you've you've been through this experience. You're kind of riding this out. Um, but you've all been affected as young professionals. Your you know your careers, your your, your dreams for the future. Um, I would love to know about how this has changed your expectations. Um, and if you've done any adjustments of your future plans as a result um, of COVID. Um, I had expectations of being a productive, really wanting to um, be able to, you know, get all the things on my checklist done in a day, uh, making sure that like by the time I could sign off for the day I had done what I planned for myself and I think along the way um, during this however many months I battled with myself a lot to say like it's okay if you don't meet um, your productivity for the day or it's okay if you didn't get that second thing done because you needed to like step away and like go take a walk outside or um, you know if you have to leave something for tomorrow that's okay. Like it'll get done. Um, so I've had to, I feel like just work through my own type of like, I want to still be efficient and, and do all the things I, I have to do. But also I had to realize like, we're in a worldwide crisis and I don't have to meet with the things that maybe in like a typical, if I was driving to work, doing those things and able to leave them in my office and then come back home. Um, yeah, I do really like change my expectations of myself um and that has been I think it's still growing as we go but I've come to a lot more peace with um one I can say like I've I it, well, a no for me um that you know allows me to still be able to breathe and like still makes me excited about what I have to do for the next day um so expectations with that have shifted um and then kind of goes for, goes for the future. I'm excited to get to do more in person, but I think getting to, um, I'm a supervisor, so I, I miss that like in person, getting to talk to my workers directly or meet with them or have them like come in my office or me stop in, in theirs and, um, you know, getting to really like process through things or go get a coffee if we need to. And so um, I think my hope is to get back to that, that place and, um, but I'm also okay with whatever time that does come. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit for me. Thank you. So I think that I had to adjust to be more comfortable with change. And I think that's a really good thing, especially for the situation I was in um, because I was working as a uh, temp at HSB. That was the uh, insurance place I used to work at. And it was like communicated between me and leadership, like when this is over, you're being brought on full time, um, you will have a permanent job here. And then uh, my contract was almost up and then COVID happened. And the finances at HSB um, made it so they had to put a freeze across all hiring. And so uh, they had to call me and say like, hey, when your contract's up, it's up. And so I had to move on from there. I had to find a new job pretty quickly. And I can say that was one of the best things that could have happened because I know that I get comfortable very easily. And having changed jobs, I have um, 
I've realized uh, more of what I'm expecting out of a job and what I like out of a job for me. Um, and that only came from changing jobs and seeing two different things. And SCI is a much better fit for me. I'm much happier there. And um, yeah, I think that it helped me not get so uh, comfortable, but um, has kind of set an expectation that in the future I'll have to move again. And it might not be for the best, but it might be for the best. And you just got to try and find out. Thank you. Okay. Um, man, I definitely think one of the words that I felt like became my motto was like pivoting because I just realized I had to continuously pivot during the summer. And then when I got this uh, teaching online gig, and then even now, as I know that like the end of the semester is coming up, um, you know, preparing for what that means. I think too, I did start to see, like, I think two things happen. One, I would say I started to realize that investing in my like professional career didn't always mean like job searching. Like sometimes it meant like I actually started to, uh, writing articles on Medium because I wanted to start getting my writing out there. And so I wanted to have something to send to employers if they wanted to like see how I wrote or even see like some of my communications expertise out like out in the world. And even just to give me something that I was like, okay, I'm completing something because it gets so disheartening when you're job searching and you send things out there and you never know if it's gonna come back. And so having something where you know you've like completed it and you can see it and you can see what it's doing. Like, uh, it's just really encouraging. So I realized that professional growth didn't always mean, you know, job searching or trying to think of the career. And, um, and so I started exploring other ways to kind of grow myself and like position myself where I could, you know, have some opportunities. And then the second thing I guess would be, I definitely have, like I hold on more loosely to like my goals for myself and I I've realized now I will say this like I have not I still have really high goals for myself so I will say don't let COVID like stop you from taking your dream job or wanting to reach those goals that you have for yourself but they just might not happen in the timeline that you expect and that's kind of what I've settled on so um, if it doesn't happen right away, I'm just going to say, well, it hasn't happened yet. And that's just where I'm going to land on. I will say I have been thankful because it's given me more time for so many things. Like Ian was saying, like, I just feel like it slowed me down. So I started to think about more of what I actually want in my first job out of grad school. And also just, it slowed me down. I've been with family and it's actually been a really important time for me to be with my family during this time. So it's just been like a blessing in disguise in some ways, but, um, but I have to say it has definitely been frustrating because I'm someone who likes to plan. So <laughs> uh, it was hard to like let go of those plans and, and kind of be more loose about them, so. Thank you. Um, my plans have changed a bit for, for what I wanted to do after school. Um, my plan was to just find some sort of temporary work for a year or so after I graduated and then eventually go to seminary to start a career doing some sort of ministry or parachurch stuff. Um, and so I was, COVID happened um, and I was just scrambling to, you know, find a job so I could find an apartment and um, just reached out to, to find anything that I could. Um, and Sarah actually pointed me towards this job and I really wasn't interested because I, yeah, I wasn't really interested in higher ed, but I was looking for anything. Um, so she convinced me to apply. Um, and this job has been quite a blessing in disguise. Um, there's just a lot of opportunities that I've gotten um, that have kind of taught me, especially in this time of COVID that it's okay to be comfortable, especially, you know, college is crazy. Um, so sometimes it may be good to take a more comfortable job right after college or especially, you know, during COVID. Um, 
So challenging what Ian said, change is good, but also don't be afraid of comfort. Thanks so much, everybody. Um, Kyra, you actually touched on this a little bit in your last answer, but we would love to hear what uh, is one thing you've been doing to help take care of yourself and your well-being during this process, whether the job search or in order to de-stress from work itself. Like I said, walk away, have a dance, <laughs> do your work and walk uh, away and be away from work for the day. Um, I invested in a paint by number. <laughs> so halfway through the pandemic, I realized I am so stressed out and TV doesn't really cut it for me. Like I, like that just feels like, okay, I'm walking from like my dining room to the living room and it still feels like something I would normally do but all of it kind of meshed together um so it's actually here on my desk that I'm <laughs> working on this paint by number it's taking a ridiculously long time so I will probably um be doing it well into next year but literally something to like be able to like watch it be able to like grow over time or um it's actually been really distress stressful and I've um gotten to do that and like I'll watch a show in the background maybe but the literal just painting um, it's really calmed me down. So I like to try to end my nights with that or um, read a book about something that's like just completely different than my work related um, tasks that I'm doing. So, yeah. Speaking of watching things grow <laughs> um, for de-stressing, I've been doing a lot of gardening. The other day I bought like 17 new plants and I'm driving my boyfriend crazy. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of plants. <laughs> you're a plant. You're a plant dad. I, am. I love that. Um, something that I picked up during college that has been super helpful, um, becoming a working adult, was taking a Sabbath, and that doesn't necessarily have to be on Sunday or a full day. Um, I just started by taking a couple hours off, making sure that I was taking a couple hours off during the week, um, and then it you know, turned into a whole day eventually after planning and, and working on getting there. Um, but that has been absolutely necessary during all of this craziness to just make sure that I have a day um, where I can do absolutely nothing or do things that are life-giving to me, like blow bubbles or um, color or whatever, just, just things that um, will refill me as you're pouring out throughout the week. Oh man, I wish I had something like really interesting to share. Like I've started a new hobby or <laughs> like I have a color. Yeah, like a paint by numbers or coloring book. I, man, one thing that I'm doing to self-care. Okay, well, I don't think it's been one thing. So I'll share like a few small things because I think that's what's been getting me through uh, so well, like one small thing has just been getting outside. Like I know that I do so much better when I've had some time being out outdoors. And so there's a park nearby that I will go to, to just like take, take a couple walks around the park. And, um, and it also just helps me, you know, feel like, I don't know, you get fresh air and you're moving your body and it, it just feels really nice. And I think to, I've just decided to like be more patient with myself. Like I, I feel like I have been more patient even with like my classes, the way that I have my schedule is really flexible. Like I don't really have nine to five. I have three classes I'm teaching and they like go from like in the morning to the evening sometimes. And then the days that I have off, I'm doing freelance work. So I've like allowed myself to like sleep in if I feel tired or like just kind of not have to feel like every day has to be exactly the same. And I keep like a routine, but I just have given myself more grace. If like, I feel like my body's telling me I'm really exhausted today, then I just kind of take it more, like have an easier day than like trying to feel like I have to do everything on my to-do list. So unfortunately I don't have any cool hobbies to share, but, <laughs> um, but maybe that will come in, in the coming months. <laughs>
Um, I think that uh, the, the last question that, that we had um, was really just kind of getting to, um, I'm sure that a lot of people have asked you in your family, you know, like what piece of advice do you have? Um, so I, that really, I think that that's, that's the most um, helpful thing that you can, you can do is just, what would you say your best advice is for anyone who is seeking opportunities right now, whether that be an internship, whether that be a job, um, trying to think or going to grad school, whatever next step, what would be your best piece of advice or, you know, a best piece of advice? I'd say that I have heard from so many people, including myself, that in the application process, there's nothing out there. Why do I even bother applying anywhere? Because I'm not going to hear back. It's just going to be spent effort. And that is not true. The best piece of advice I can offer is just keep sending them out. It'll take a lot of effort. It'll take a lot of applications and it's going to be tiring, but they are out there and it is worth looking into. Um, something that I actually just saw recently too, during an interview process with someone, um, they took the time to ask some, some really good questions about how are you guys actually like adapting during this time? And so I'll say like two things about that word, like everyone has had to adapt in a different way. Um, and so everyone's experience with that really valuable, um, and asking those questions because ev almost every single job <laughs> I'd say has had to see a change in how they've done things. And so um, it's doable and you can be adaptable too, but um, asking those questions and um, being creative then. So I've had some virtual interviews and I've had some people like send a card in the mail and I was like, whoa, that was so refreshing to get like a thank you in the mail. Like when I typically get that, um, typically you get over an email. So even though, yeah, I think like it, there's also creative ways to do things and we've all had to learn that in a lot of different ways. Um, so yeah, I would just definitely keep asking the questions and know that there is, um, we all I think have inherent skills to be adaptable, but and we're all doing it. So definitely um, look out for those ways and ask those questions and how, how that works. I would say to don't be afraid I don't know if that sentence makes sense. Don't be afraid of new opportunities or things that you may not be interested in. Um, like I said earlier, I probably applied to 50 jobs. Um, over half of them weren't things that I would consider myself interested in. And like, like I said before, the job that I'm currently in, I wasn't <laughs> really interested in. Um, but the, the longer that I've been in the job, I've, I've been here four months. It's just been um, such a neat opportunity. So don't be afraid to apply to things that may seem a bit out there. I also wanted to add one. Um, this doesn't pertain so much to COVID, but just applying to jobs in general. Um, but especially now that it's taking so much emotional toll, uh, a lot of times, I mean, everyone has had that experience of getting that one rejection from a job and it hitting really, really hard. Um, and a good piece of advice I got is to not just power through and keep applying and keep blah, 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 blah. Take the day, let it sting and reflect on why. Why did you really want that job? Why does it hurt that you don't have it? Shift your job search into that direction so that you can have whatever you feel like you're missing. I'll talk onto that quickly too. One of my deepest rejections and after like a day of sitting with it too, I asked the employer like questions why, um, if there's things and or advice that they would give for going any other places. And uh, I was surprised about like the things too, like, oh, we know this could, could require licensure. This would require this type of thing. And so the recommendations I got out of that too were actually really valuable. Um, so even asking the questions was helpful to know and understand so I could take, yeah, take that next step and be able to know what I would qualify for or not, or things that I could maybe um, grow in even for interviewing or those different things. So it's helpful to ask too. 
Okay, well, I'm going to do a little plug for myself here because um, I actually wrote an article about how to job search in the time of the coronavirus on my Medium account. It's also on my LinkedIn. Um, but I basically did a bunch of research when I realized that I was going to be like dropped in, like drop kicked into this environment after grad school. So as a research assistant, I was very used to like gathering information and synthesizing it. So I basically went out and found every expert talking about what you should do when you're in COVID. And I basically put it into a list. So um, I know Sarah has that somewhere too, but either way, I felt like that was one. I'm grabbing it right now. Okay. I'm going to put it in chat right now. <laughs> awesome. So I felt like that was really cool because it wasn't me. It was like other people. Uh, and I also like hyperlinked where I got the information. So you can always check out the original articles too. But um, that said, I would say what I realized was one, I realized that I started becoming more harsh with myself. Like when I looked at the qualifications and, and things that they wanted for like candidates and I wouldn't have something, I would like not apply. And I, I started like asking myself like why I'm not doing, like why would I not apply to that job just because I don't check off every box. So I started being like actually kind of reckless with like the jobs I was applying to. And I just felt like that started gain like bringing more confidence and even like what Jacqueline was saying with like even trying out positions that maybe didn't fit exactly what I thought I wanted for myself but just like I liked the company or I knew I would be doing a lot of writing and I love writing or I knew it would be like in a team and I loved working with teams so I definitely like went out of my comfort zone with what I was applying to even though somehow COVID had made me expect like less of myself or like I don't even know and the other thing I would say is not really COVID related, but I um I had kind of like a mentor in grad school who was helping me kind of prepare for the career, like, you know, uh, transition. And he always was just very wise. And one of the things he like told me, he was one of the professors that I researched for, but he said that if you like, what you should do is you should go out and like look on LinkedIn or like just research and find the person who has the job that you want. It doesn't have to be like the next job that you want, but like the ideal job that you want one day, um, or it can be the job that you want right now, either or, but you should reach out to them and actually like ask for an informational interview or just say like, I'd love to treat you for a coffee obviously that's different right now in COVID but you could do like everyone's on Zoom now so it's really easy to get someone to talk to you and I've actually continued doing informational interviews but if you grab someone who has the job that you think you want and then you talk to them about how they got there or just like what they did that might even help you figure out like oh I shouldn't go like straight into the career force I need to go to grad school first or I need this license first or I need to pass this exam first like it may surprise you what direction you might want to go in depending on you know what that person tells you and I wouldn't probably just pick one person like I would probably try to find a few people that have the jobs that you're interested in but that to me was like excellent because I could actually like see like okay this they did this this and this to like rise to that and um and now I know kind of what it, I need to kind of at least be aware of and in some cases it might even make you realize you don't want to do that so um that's like general advice but definitely now that COVID's happening I think people are more open to like talking to people and they're more isolated so they'll probably welcome like a you know an informational interview so that's my take Thank you so much, everybody. Um, do we have uh, any questions from our audience members? Remember, you can use the chat or you could come off mic. Or on mic, I guess. <laughs> Our questions were just too good, Kristen. Yes, yeah. Where <laughs> where our panelists were just too thorough in their answers. I know they're 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 so they're so on brand. All right. Well, this has been a really great 
evening of conversation. Um, I'm so grateful to uh, all of our panelists for giving of their time uh, on, a, on a Monday night to, uh, to reflect on kind of the journey that they've been on. Um, just really grateful for your experience, um, for sharing uh, as an alum, and we're just really, uh, really proud of you, really proud of all of you and the journeys that you've been on and, and uh, what you've accomplished. And we hope that we'll get to have you come back again uh, sometime if you're willing. Um, yeah. All right, well, thanks to everyone. So uh, feel free to move about the cabin. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, as always, if you have any questions about um, dealing with your own resume or your own job search, or you're frustrated, you're not sure what to do, um, don't forget that the Career Center is here for you. Uh, you can always find us um, on eastern.edu slash careers, which I'll pop into the chat for you, um, but we're pretty easy to find otherwise. So um, please let us know how we can be of help to you um, in your next steps. And if you're interested in revisiting this wise information in the future, we'll have the video uh, posted on YouTube in the next few days as well.